When Will Smith slapped Chris Rock during the Oscars, you know who became the busiest and most important person? Meredith O'Sullivan, his publicist. From then on, it was her job to put Will Smith back to the good graces of Hollywood and the public. But crisis management is just one of the many jobs of a publicist in Hollywood. We need to know the totality of what they really do and know how they are different from a marketing and promotions person. Do we really need them to help SB19 and other Asian artists to start and boost their career in the West? What can they do to help Asian artists? Having a publicist sounds so bougie. Normally, in startups or artists that are just starting their career, a publicist would be one of the least priorities because the outcome of their work can't be clearly measured. Unlike paid ads, which you can directly attribute to a sale, you can't directly attribute the rise in an artist's popularity to the media mentions that a publicist generated for you. So for us to determine whether or not a publicist is really necessary in SB19 or other Asian artists' bid to conquer the West, let's understand what publicists do. Hi! Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. I would really appreciate it. And don't forget to get in touch with me in any of the social media links that you see on your screen right now. You can also leave your comments below if you have any suggestions, violent reactions. Don't hesitate. Now, back to the video. Number one, they help you shape your image to the media. Okay, the media shapes your image to the public. It's the publicist that shapes your image to the media. Publicists know the media. They know what will interest them. Publicists know what they are looking for and what to say to get media mentions, write-ups, or interviews. So the first thing they do is to understand the artist's brand, who they are, what makes that celebrity unique, and what aspects of their personality or their brand will appeal most to the media. Remember, the media needs to feed the public with things with which the public would be interested in reading, watching, listening, and interacting. So a publicist will package you to be attractive to the media. As an example, let's say the celebrity is a Filipino opera singer who got her first major role in an opera in Broadway. In pop media, hardly anyone will care about an opera show. But the story of a Filipino opera singer becoming the first Asian singer to lead an opera show in Broadway will appeal to the American Asian Pacific Islander or AAPI issues that media is clamoring for right now. So that will be your primary identity. The Asian who beat all odds, fighting against stereotypes and racism to become the first Asian to lead an opera in Broadway. Number two, secure interviews and write-ups targeting your segments. Once you have your image locked, they need to get you press or media attention. They will reach out to their existing contacts to send them your profile, or in Hollywood terms, your sizzle. Your sizzle is a one-page or a one-minute video that has your highlights. The intention is to sell you, let them know what makes you unique, what it is that you can offer, what makes you interesting, and they can also seek out opportunities by utilizing PR boards. This is where reporters and publications would post if they need people to interview. This is called a pitch request. Whatever the publicist sends out should, of course, be approved by the client. Number three, prepare you for interviews and give you talking points. When publicists secure interviews, they will prepare you for it. They will give you some talking points that the reporter might ask you and then train you on how to do the interview. But more importantly, they will try to improve how you present your ideas. They will tell you if you have a habit that you should get rid of, maybe you're saying ah a lot, or maybe you fidget too much, or maybe you don't smile enough. But there are more critical points too. Maybe you talk too much before you get to the point, or maybe you get to the point right away without giving enough context. 
They will also train you how to respond to critical questions when you don't know the answer or questions that you shouldn't be answering. The objective is to present to you the best way to present the image and the packaging they prepared for you. Is how do you shape a media message? How do you go from... What happens if the reporter asks me a question that I just don't know the answer? Number four, editorial calendars. Newspapers, news shows, and other media companies have editorial calendars. On your screen right now is Forbes' actual 2023 editorial calendar. The editorial calendar is the guide of the monthly topics, at least the major ones or themes that a publication or media company will be running for the year. The intention is to coordinate the planning, managing the various stages involved in content creation, idea generation, production, publishing, and promotion. The publicist's job is to find for you the topic that you can be a part of. They will then customize the pitch for you to fit the topic at hand. They might also set up new projects or new events that will fit the theme and that is centered on you. Number five, train you on how to deliver your message. So Western culture and Asian culture are really <laughs> two different things. And there are things that we say in our language, things that we say, or just the culture itself, things that we say or things that we do that is just ordinary for us but could actually be offensive in the West. There are certain nuances in the Western language and the publicist will try and train you on how to be able to still deliver your message without risking offending uh, anybody in the West. Uh, I know that there's a huge talk about uh, the West being more accommodating and understanding of the Asian culture, but that's only actually true if it doesn't clash with theirs. <laughs> so they are still the priority. And um, you know what they say, uh, do what the Romans do when in Rome. So, so yeah, they usually, a publicist would usually prepare like two to three talking points in an interview and they will train you on how to stay with that talking point. I, one of the major problems in the U.S. right now when they are interviewing an Asian is that they will always try to get that conversation into the race talk. And there are many Asians that are doing things that are where their race don't play a game, don't play a role, so they don't really feel the need to talk about it. But you know, the AAPI, uh, Asian American Pacific Islander movement, uh, it seems to be such a, an important thing and a, a glamorized thing for many Western uh, reporters. So they will try to get you to talk about it. And so um, the job of the publicist is to try and find the middle ground. If they know that that is what attracted the media to you, then they will try to find the middle ground so that you can deliver your message and still the media will be fed. So that, yeah, so it's also there are things, you know, a reporter could be asking things that are not related to the talking points, you know, the things that you actually want to say. So the publicist will train you on how to you can stay in the, the talking points that they prepared for you. Just do remember that a publicist and a media trainer are actually two different professions, two different people. A publicist may also be a media trainer and they usually have the capability to train you. But if you want like a more extensive media training, that's a different person, that's a different program, that's a different pay. And there are a lot of public PR companies that offer that would actually offer both, uh, a publicist and media training. Number six, campaign for awards. Grammys, Oscars, those are voting-based awards. Industry insiders and members will actually vote for the winner. Then there are awards for other arts like web designers, producers, painters, and others. A publicist should actually find those awards and lead the submission of your name. They will create the packet or deck providing what the award-giving body should know about you proving that you should be winning the award. For awards like Grammy and Oscars, publicists may actually campaign for you through existing and new connections. Each publicist has a different way of doing this, but they will lead or help you in your campaign. Number seven, media coverage, including reviews. If a celebrity has a new project, let's say a new movie or a new stage play, 
the publicist should get the word out to the media in order to generate reviews, coverage, and interest, and free promotion. Movies, stage plays, galleries, and others usually have a press or media day. The media gets the first dibs in watching or seeing the thing and that will allow them to do reviews and that will generate buzz for the show or event or whatever it is that you are trying to sell or show. This will also help you to get interview invitations. Remember that for a reporter to want to interview you, they should have something newsworthy. Launching a show or a movie, that is news for them. Number eight, make introductions to people in your industry. This is usually not an official task, but top publicists have connections that could help celebrities a great deal. For example, if a management company wants their idol to be a brand ambassador of a brand, they will be able to help you make introductions or probably they know someone who knows someone who knows someone. Number nine, gets you attention. If you think those paparazzi photos of celebrities in Hollywood are just a bunch of reporters invading the privacy of celebrities, you would only be right some of the time. <laughs> Publicists know where reporters are and they can ask their clients or celebrities to go to those places to be visible. And they actually plan for their client to make an appearance in places where there will be more reporters. It can also be the other way around. They can tip reporters where the celebrities will be so that the reporters can go there and take pictures of a celebrity or maybe even get a Q&A. This is why reporters know when celebrities are going to the airport or the restaurant and they take pictures of what they are wearing, who they are with, and other things. Lastly, press releases. So writing and distribution of press releases, uh, I, many people think that that is the main job of a PR person or a publicist, but in fact, it's actually a minor thing that they do. They do it. If there's anything worth, you know, newsworthy that you did, then they will actually write the PR, distribute it, and if there are reporters interested in what you are doing, then they will actually write about it. Or, sorry, they will set it up, the interviews and scheduling and stuff like that. But that's just a minor thing. Okay, so key takeaways, it's really the connection that you're paying for when you uh, hire uh, a publicist or a PR person. And do remember that they, it is the, well, it's the connection and their ability to package you and your message so that it's attractive to their connections. And so this is a lifelong relationship they develop with editors and reporters. Remember that the C-level executives, reporters, editors, you know, people like that, they are inundated with requests, people trying to get their attention day in and day out. And it's the publicist's job to rise above the clutter by, as I've said, developing actual relationships. So they build this for years and years. And that's what you're paying for. They rise above the clutter, above the paid ads, above the the appointments and stuff like that by developing the relationship so that they are they can actually be a, a phone call away from the people that actually need to 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 pay you attention. Is it possible for for a publicist to not be needed, like to be an exception to this? Of course, it's always it's always possible. An exception is always possible. But if you're a marketing person, if you're trying to manage an artist, the one thing that you should know is that you don't want to leave everything to chance, right? And being an exception is leaving something to chance. You can work as hard as you can so that you become the exception, but you can't count on it. You want to be as systematic as possible so that you can guarantee as much as you can the success of the Asian artist. So it is possible, but we shouldn't count on it. So I hope you learned something. Uh, there are, there are, I know that the, the Miller PR company is actually heavy on Asian artists and that may, may be strategic for them. But I think personally, I think SB19 and a lot of Asian artists would actually need some, like a big name, like a big name, a big one, the respected 
and popular publicists in Hollywood so that it's easier for them to break through. But of course, those people are also more expensive. The title card that I've been using, the guy in that picture, is actually known as one of the most, uh, if not the most, in-demand publicist in Hollywood. He's the publicist of Jennifer Aniston, among other uh, A-list celebrities in Hollywood. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. Again, if you have any questions, clarifications, you want to share something, violent reactions, leave them in the comment section below. Or you can get in touch with me in any social media links, that, in any of the social media links that you see on your screen right now. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. And we are a couple of days away from Christmas. I want to greet everybody a Merry Merry Christmas. I hope you're spending it with the people that you love or that you, people whose company you enjoy at the very least. And if you're just spending it alone, I hope you're warm, you're keeping yourself relaxed and peaceful so that uh, you will be recharged for, for the new year. So Merry Christmas. And if you don't want to hear that, know that from the bottom of my heart, I am wishing you a very, very happy holiday.